The report into whether Boris Johnson lied to MPs over Partygate will finally be published at 9am tomorrow. But would you believe yet another row has emerged within the last hour? Because it's been reported that one member of that committee, Sir Bernard Jenkin, attended a birthday drinks party in Parliament during lockdown. Boris Johnson has said if that's true, it's outrageous and a total contempt of Parliament. And he has called on Bernard Jenkin to resign. It's as if this thing is never going to end, isn't it, really? Joining me in the studio now is Talk TV's political editor, Kate McCann. Gosh, Kate, these are games, <laughs> aren't they? Silly games that they're being that are being played out now and we all have to participate somehow in all of this. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of politics going on, isn't there? Yeah. And I know we were just saying, weren't we, how complicated this has now yeah. got. So let's try and keep it as simple as possible. We know that this committee report, which is the Privileges Committee report into Boris Johnson and the parties that happened during lockdown, was due to come out earlier this week and it didn't. It was stopped because Boris Johnson submitted extra evidence on Monday night at 11.57 and we understand what he was submitting was some questions about how the committee came to its conclusions and whether or not it was fair. Now, the report is now expected at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning and it's going to be fairly long, you know, tens of thousands of, of words. Now, this afternoon, Guido Fawkes, the website, has reported that Bernard Jenkin attended what has been called a party during lockdown. We should just say who Bernard Jenkin is in case we Yeah, he's a, sure. he's a Conservative MP, but he's also a member of the committee, yes. so, which is why it makes it very important. So, so Bernard is said to have gone to this event, um, and it was inside Parliament. Now, it was hosted by Dame Eleanor Lang, and she has given a comment. She's the Deputy Speaker of the House of Commons. She says, at the beginning of the pandemic, I took advice on how many people could be present in a room. I had the room measured and I kept a two metre ruler so that I could always verify that nobody who was working here was put at risk. Now, working in a space was fine, but yes. at the time, you were not allowed to have any kind of work drinks, work party, work gathering, nothing of the sort. Mm -hmm. And the report suggests that there were drinks, there was food, and it was a birthday party that Sabrina Jenkin attended. Now, so I've got to stop you there and just ask, why now? Why this afternoon? What time is it? So it's 4.36. Yeah. So this came out about 3.36 today. Why now? Why after all this, Boris Johnson has resigned as an MP with immediate effect. Nadine Dorries has mm. gone the way of all our flesh in the same thing. We've got, we've got the, the report delayed. We've got 11th hour evidence at 11.57 of some procedural thing that sounds like absolutely everything we've already heard a million times before. Mm. And suddenly, Bernard Jenkin has had a bun and a sandwich and something to drink at this Eleanor Lang soiree that we've never heard of until now. Why haven't we heard of it before? Yeah, I think there's a huge amount of politics going on here and the most recent development in what's happening this afternoon is that Nadine Dorries has actually written to the committee uh, suggesting, well she says, I can read it to you, I'm very concerned to read the reports online that Sir Bernard Jenkin attended something that was very much a party on the 8th of December 2020. Please could you tell me how it's possible that either his vote or his contribution to the inquiry are now legitimate or valid? Could you also please assure me the Privileges Committee will open an immediate investigation? Now, clearly what's happening here is that those MPs who feel that Boris Johnson has been treated unfairly and worth saying we've still not read the report are very concerned that if a member of that committee is thought to have done something, which mm -hmm. Boris Johnson was also accused of, that it makes it very difficult for them to have sat on that committee and given a fair judgment. It's very, very difficult in this situation to know where this goes from here. I have obviously contacted Sir Bernard Jenkin to get a right of reply from him, to ask him what he would like to say about all of this. Mm. I've not heard back from him yet. Do we think that there's photographic evidence of Bernard Jenkin at one of these soirees? There's no suggestion that there are photos, but I think right. given that Dame Eleanor Lang has, has evidently been asked about it and has not denied that it happened, and that there are suggestions that other MPs were also present and that food and drink had been brought in, that it was a birthday party. And if we remember back to one of the events that Boris Johnson was accused of holding, it was also said to be a birthday celebration with cake. I think that's why we're starting to hear about this now. And, and what's very clear is that Nadine Dorries, Boris Johnson and others feel that this really does Put a, put a question mark over Sir Bernard Jenkin, his role in compiling this report and the evidence that we're all due to see at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. I mean, quite frankly, 
If it's true that Sir Bernard Jenkin was at this, I keep calling it a soiree, let's just call it what it is, some party with drinks, mm. with food, that isn't work and wasn't during working hours and nobody, I think we're looking at a picture of it right now, it just looks like... Well, that's the Boris Johnson This is the Boris Johnson yes, party, it's exactly. not the same one. This is a different party we're talking about. They all look exactly the same, I've got to say, don't they? <laughs> uh, they all just look rather miserable and people standing looking absolutely wretched at these things. But nevertheless, if, if Sir Bernard Jenkin has and did attend that party. Mm. Is it not the most peculiar thing that he allowed himself to be part of this committee looking into Partygate? Did he have to be on that particular inquiry? Well, he's a member of the Privileges Committee, so yes, but I think that that's clearly what the inference is here, which is that if somebody who had broken the rules was then to sit in judgment of somebody else who is reported to have broken the rules, Nadine Dorries, as mm. she suggested there in that that I just read out, is suggesting that there needs to be an investigation into Bernard Jenkin and that actually questions about whether his role on the committee was right, fair or proper. I mean, it's just worth remembering that on the 8th of December 2020, London was in a tier two lockdown mm. at that point. So you shouldn't have been gathering in more than six people indoors, in public or uh, in private buildings. And there was no Christmas exception to those rules. I think that was the particular point when we were expecting that maybe you would be allowed to mix in a bigger right. group. And then that was rescinded at the last moment because there were concerns about the rate of infection. So, you know, look, as I say, I've approached Bernard Jenkins for a comment. He hasn't got back to me yet. He has responded to the Guido Fawkes website, but only insofar as him saying, when asked about it, he says that he doesn't remember. I did not attend any drinks parties during lockdown, he told that that website. And then when asked further about this celebration, he says, I don't recall where the drinks were served. So we'll have to wait and see what he says. But it's very, very clear from Boris Johnson's response from the tone. I mean, he's, he's very, very, you know, definitely asking for... Uh, Bernard Jenkins, big questions about him, Nadine Dorries too. This is not going to be over today. But what is the punchline possibly of this? So, so let's imagine that Boris is really rattling his sabre and absolutely adamant that Bernard Jenkins went to a party at the time when Boris himself was accused of going to a party and therefore is disqualified from having a view about whether Boris should or shouldn't have done to whether he did or didn't mislead Parliament deliberately. So let's assume that, that Boris really does think this and he feels very adamantly, so does Nadine Dorries. What, what then, because this committee, this, this inquiry, they've already come up with their verdict. So if... Bernard Jenkin were to step down. He's stepping down after the event. Anyway, is he trying to suggest that it all needs to start again from the very beginning without Jenkin? One has to presume that that is, is what the suggestion is here. I mean, Nadine Dorries' email again says, is it how is it possible that either his vote or his contribution to the inquiry are now legitimate or valid? Now, I think that question about a vote, there have been some suggestions that the committee wasn't necessarily 100% in agreement when it comes to the, the final recommendations of this report. And I say again, as we have said repeatedly this week, until we all read it, it's very difficult to comment on exactly what it is going to say. We've had lots of press reporting, you know, I've had conversations with people about what it's going to have in it. But until I read it, I don't know for definite. It's very hard for me to give you an, an honest answer. Mm. I think clearly what's happening here is that Nadine Dorries and Boris Johnson are asking big questions and would like to see those questions be put to the committee. The committee at the moment have committed to releasing this report at nine o'clock in the morning tomorrow. That's the su suggestion. There's been nothing, unless it's happened while we've been on air right now, yes. to suggest that it's going to be delayed any further. But evidently that's what they would like. It's hard to see though what happens next because they have resigned from Parliament. Now Nadine Dorries hasn't formally handed in her resignation, but my understanding is that she still intends to do that. She's just going to take a couple of days, a week or so until she... Is it being she... considered that she might be deliberately delaying or, or, you know, being exceptionally slow about it for various obstructive reasons? I mean, I have heard this today. doesn't mean it's true just because I've heard it, but could she do, be doing that? Could she be delaying and dallying a feeling, on purpose? I think there's a feeling from her side that remaining as an MP without formally standing down does give her the ability to, for example, give a speech in Parliament, as some MPs have chosen to do on their resignation, mm -hmm. under privilege, which she wouldn't have if she did make that final step. I don't think there's any suggestion that she's going to walk back from that decision, but it is up to her. I mean, other MPs have taken a couple of months to, to formally resign. Because she said with immediate effect, which I took to mean with immediate effect, as that is what she said. I think said, a lot of people did. Which I did. thought meant yes. with immediate effect, which yeah. means right now. It doesn't mean in yeah. a few days or a bit later or at some other juncture. With immediate effect means now. Yeah. But she didn't mean that.
No, well, and look, clearly, because she hasn't done it at the same time as the other two. And what that does do is it makes it difficult for the Conservative Party to schedule all of those by-elections on the same day, which we know they want to do. I mean, potentially, she could take two months or so if she wanted to go down that road. I don't think she will push it that far. But I think from her perspective, you've seen the interview. I mean, you spoke to her. You felt the I level of emotion. Her, yeah. You know, you understand she feels very hard done by here. She feels very frustrated. Yes. She feels it's very personal. And politics is often very personal, particularly when you get to that level. And I think that's what we're seeing here from Boris Johnson, from Nadine Dorries, is this sense that this is unfair, this process is not right. Mm. Now, there'll be those on the committee who say it was conducted entirely fairly and there are no questions about that report. But I think this afternoon we really will have to see what the committee says in response to that Nadine Dorries email. Well, it really is. I mean, for those people who don't have to do this kind of thing for a living... It must be unbearable, <laughs> mustn't it? The report that never quite was, that nobody quite knows whether it's mm -hmm. kosher or whether it's not, whether Bernard Jenkin went to a party, what exactly happened at, you know, three minutes to midnight. It really is an awfully prolonged agony, this particular thing, isn't it? I think for a lot of people, they will want to read the report or at least the, the main sections of it and come to their own conclusions. And some may have already determined that they think Boris Johnson broke the rules while others think he's been unfairly treated. I actually don't think a lot of people's minds will be changed when they do read this report in the end. I think the much bigger question for many and their, their eyes will be on was the COVID committee, the COVID yes. inquiry, which started yesterday, which is much more about actually analysing the government's response, the evidence. And that will take obviously many years, but I think for people who lost a loved one or really felt unfairly treated, yes. that will be for them the most important thing.